Hello, Spark fans, and welcome back to Advancing Spark, where we are having yet another Data Science Day. So, one of the things that we saw announced back at the Data AI Summit was this thing called MLflow Pipelines. And I talked a little bit about what it actually is based on having a quick skim and watching the keynote announcement. And it's all to do with making these machine learning workflows more reproducible, more transferable between environments, more predictable. Um, but that doesn't actually tell you anything, does it? So I thought today we'll have a bit of a play and we'll have a look at how it actually works. So once again, we're going to introduce Gabby in a second and she's going to come and show us how she got on playing with the very first templates that Databricks have released. So you can have the experimental version of MLflow pipelines, how it worked, what she thought, all of that good stuff. As always, if you're new around here, don't forget to like and subscribe. Let us know down in the comments what you think about MLflow pipelines. Is it actually useful? Uh, have you tried it and gone, I've got no way? Tried it, got really good? Are you going to adopt it? Have you used other similar things elsewhere? Let us know what you think. It's always good to know how you guys are getting on with things. And then let's go and bring Gavi on. Hello, Gavi, and thanks for joining us again. Hi, Simon. Thanks for having me back. I'm really excited to be here today to talk to you about ammo flow pipelines. Good. Very excited. Levels of enthusiasm. <laughs> <laughs> and it's also really warm here. So even more, I'm, I'm even more enthusiastic about the whole day today. I'm just slowly melting in my little office. It's fine. It's fine. It's all good. It'll be okay. I'll survive. <laughs> so, Simon, I saw your video about introducing pipelines. Uh, uh, what a great introduction into the pipelines and and everything else, right? The, the ML flow announcements as well. So, thank you for doing that. More than welcome. But obviously, I can just read it and go, this is what it sounds like it is. I need you to actually go through and tell us how we actually get using it and how we get value from it, right? Yeah, absolutely. I mean, yep, yeah, I can do that. So this that's why I'm here today, just to show you um, how the team and advancing analytics at the back of the announcement have got our hands on the MLflow pipelines. And we've had a little play with it at the minute now. We've, they've only got one uh, template available, which is for regression problems. But nevertheless, we've had a play with it. And we've had a lot of fun playing around with it and just investigating you know, what you do with it, what's it all about. They're Essentially, pipelines are just predefined steps which are fully customizable, right? So they enforce desired order of application steps. And that that just adheres to common practices with ML ops and just makes up the handoff between data scientists and ML engineers that more seamless. Yeah. I mean, sounds good. Where yeah. do we get started? Right, so oh, I've got a demo already, Simon. I can share my screen and talk you through it. Can you see my screen? Yeah, yeah, we can see the machine learning persona already here. Brilliant. Okay, so to get started, really easy, right? If you go onto the MLflow website, they've got a link to their GitHub repo. And all I've done is pull down the repo to my Databricks workspace here. So if you go onto repos, it's all there. So that's the organized structured directory all done for me up front by Databricks. So yes, can so you, can you see how go that Go and download looks? the template and install it yourself. It's just hooked straight up to their Git repo. Exactly, right? So, um, well, we've got, we've got, as you can see, I've played around quite a, quite a lot with it, but here we've got your pipeline YAML file that defines everything. We've got notebooks as well that's provided. So Databricks has provided um, ability to work off your Databricks environment, or if you're trying to develop it using uh, locally, you can use your Jupyter notebooks as well. So that's, that's really flexible as well. But what we're going to do today is work off Databricks notebook. So in terms of getting, getting started, right? So you've got your GitHub repo. What we also need to do is install MLflow pipelines into a cluster. Mm -hmm. um, and as mentioned before, it's only one template, which is a regression template. So that's the problem that we'll be looking at today. So what we've done is we've got a simple regression problem and we've got a data set all ready to go. And we're going to just have a look at how we would use pipelines to solve a data science problem. So, OK, so what you need to get started is it's all ready for us. I've not had to change any of this. It all comes readily av available. And as I said, I'm working off Databricks. So what you do is you just run this, this selected file, your Databricks file, and it goes through all this process, right? What I really like about the uh, inspectors, I don't know how they've done it, but they've included a fancy diagram. And this diagram pretty much shows you how we solve 
a data science problem or machine learning problem. So you start off, you've got your pipeline YAML that defines your mm -hmm. entire problem. Then you start off with ingesting your data. So ingest, ingestion is just about getting your data into Databricks. Um, and then you've got your, you know, you're going to split your data into training and validation. Then you've got your transformation steps and then your training and evaluation. Okay. Well, I mean, that's that's pretty, pretty fancy in terms of pulling out all the lineage and all the steps and giving you that nice visual of how it's all working. Yeah, and it's all user-provided code, right? And it's all customizable and it adheres to best practices. So it's reusable, it's modular, it's easy to go go ahead and test as well. So right, right, right at the start, you created the new pipeline, right? So you created the new pipeline object. That P object is instantiating a new pipeline, and then you can just inspect it and it worked that out based on the YAML, based on the notebooks, based on all the objects in that folder. Yes. Yeah. Awesome. I mean this. Yeah, this is this is a template actually. So Databricks is an opinionated template. So it's based on opinion best practices and how you would make sure that it's all done structuredly and well. Makes sense. And and, and all you do is run the template. You've got your ingest file here. So every every kind of step, you've got a different uh, file that you can open off your repo. So if you go onto your repo, and if you look into your steps. There's all your different files that's also provided that it gives you the ability to customize and add code appropriately. Um, so let's have a look at ingest, your ingest.py. And this is what it's so it's all done, it's all preloaded, it's all customizable as well. Um, so let's go back to our Databricks notebook. Uh, once we ingest our file, then what we need to do is that so that's looking at my data file now. That's looking at my data. So what am I looking at here? And it very quickly gives you, you know, what is the number of variables that you're looking at? What's the number of observation? Luckily enough, I've chosen a, a simple data set that doesn't have any missing values. How cool is that? That's that's never existed in the world, but yeah, sure. <laughs> <laughs> um, and it also gives you all the alerts up front, right? So it gives you the ability to look, okay, this is the file that I'm working with. Is this the file that I anticipated to work with? Does it look right? And it's all there done for you. <clears throat> so you can scroll down, you can have a look at it. And we've had we've played with, I think, three different data problems now, data, data regression type problems. And it works, so it works out of the box, right? So it's it's really good as well. So once you ingest your files, have a play with it, you can look at all what the different features within your data set and have a feel, okay, you know, what do I need to do? So for example, for this data set, I've looked at distance to um I think this is distance to the MRT station. And I can see certain outliers here, right? So up front as a data scientist, I can say, right, you know, there's those outliers. I'm going to do something about it in my cleaning file. And you can just have a feel as to what you need to do, right? So once you ingest your file, the next step is your splitting. So split, let's have a look at split. Split within split. This is the opportunity for us as a data scientist or machine learning engineers to do several clean, cleaning processes. So here, what I've done is, remember the outliers that I spoke about previously mm -hmm. that was identified? I've just excluded it for now. So I said, okay, those are my outliers. I'm going to clean the data set so that I want to exclude certain things that are obvious to me. I also want to do a couple more things in terms of feature engineering. I want to create new features. I want to have a look at, I've, I've got a date time. I want to make sure that I can see the year, the month, and the day. So that's what I've done here, right? And you can do whatever you want. So this is customizable. So this is where you come in and you add your bit of code to do a bit of cleaning. Yep. Makes sense. Yeah. So everything is done here. And then we go back to our Databricks notebook. And if you run that, you would get your... So what's been cleaned, so before we had uh, less variables, now we've got more variables because I've done a bit more feature engineering. I've cleaned up a bit of my outliers and you can just go through this really quickly and just check it. So once, you, once you're happy with it, then it comes to the, I think more of the, in, the interesting step, which is your transformation step. So your transformation step, which I think is, is very interesting, it's in here, look, I've opened it. 
So let's have a look at it. So what's transformation all about? So when you have a data science problem, you'll want to do certain sort of transformation. You might want to scale certain features so it's more uniform. You'd want to encode features so that a machine can understand string variables, for example. So this is where you come in and add your own customizable code to do that transformation. So you're and doing a nice I... split out. So you're doing the prep and train and actually get the data clean. And then you're doing something almost like more like feature engineering in terms of X's of applying the logic and applying things, or is it a step before then? This is a step after the feature engineering where you're making oh. sure that in everything that you're doing to the data set is going to be readable by, by machine learning algorithm. But it's encouraging you to at least have that defined process, right? Not just one exactly. massive script where you go, run, get my data ready. It's building out into a repeatable, clean process. And it's ordered as well. So it forces people, forces data scientists to work in this ordered manner and structured manner. <laughs> what engineers have been trying to do for years. <laughs> and this is great, right? So you just make, make sure that you're going through the process and thinking about your next steps. And it's all pretty much done for you up front. Yep. And all you have to do is think about working in a slightly different manner. So this is where I come in and I say, right, you know, I want to scale certain of my features. So, and this is where I'm putting it all in a pipeline as well, which is really good practice and is being enforced by the template. So once you do this, uh, you can go back to your Databricks notebook and run your, your transformations. Uh, oh, I've gone too quick. You can run your transformation step there. And what this quickly gives you is your profile, right? It gives you a step card to show you what's been transformed, and because we're trying to adhere to good practices, your data sets automatically split into your trained validation TASA, which is very good practice. And it's all done for you. It uses transformers, which you can go back here and say, right, I remember certain features that I've transformed. Does it look right? Yes, it does. And it just shows you, it shows you everything up front here within one notebook. Nice. One thing that's really good about it that we found, say if you forget to transform a, a particular feature and you go back to transform your transform file and you add another line, you don't have to run your entire notebook then. You just run that particular code. You just run, run p dot run dot transform, which saves a lot of compute time, saves a lot of messing about running your whole notebook over and over again, which I think is very powerful as well. Yeah, I mean, and again, building modular repeatable depth in a data production pipeline. It's been how people are building pipelines for years, but it's good that we can take those same learnings, those same processes and apply it here. Yeah. So your transform step gives you gives you, you know, an ability to check your input schema, for example, so you can have a look, have a look at, okay, that's my input. What am I outputting? With this data set, I've transformed uh, some of my features and then passed through the rest as passed through. So I'm using my entire data set here. So once you're happy with your transformation, then you can come and train your model. Okay, I think train's very interesting as well. So let's go and have a look at what's within train. I have tried several different models here. So I've got an SGD estimator, for example, your random forest regressor. So you can put lots of different algorithms here, lots of different models that you want to try and test out. Yeah. So don't forget when, you, when you're when trying to do a data science problem, you're trying to solve a machine learning problem, it's a highly iterative process, right? So it's about trying out, all right, is my SGD going to be better than my random forest regressor? Uh, is my decision tree going to be better? And it's very iterative. But what this does is it gives you the ability to try and say, okay, I'm going to use three models here and then evaluate which is my best model going forward. Yeah. So once we do this, let's go back and let's have a look at uh, train. Now, this is where your ML flow integration comes in. So uh, I've just hit on train. Uh, sorry, it's a train. Is it training there? Did yep, I hit it? Right. There we go. There we are. So was it transform transform let's try again let's go to transform and that should run which is where we should see uh we should see the ml flow integration here actually so why are we not seeing that Which you normally see the the various logging going on and kind of uh, the model being registered. Yeah, 
yeah, let, let's have a look at experiments. So if I open that in a different tab, then I should see uh, 28 minutes ago. So I'm not sure why it's not running. Uh, it should run. T7. Uh, oh, what's happening here? <laughs> let's let's just try and run run everything again, and let's see what happens. Okay, so while well, well, that's running, so what what would happen right is when you run. Um, your training, it gets logs onto ML flow. So yeah. it shows you, um, let's have a look at a previous one that we've done. So it shows you, for example, here, right? 28 minutes ago, before I met with you, Simon, I did run through this and <laughs> it logs everything, right? So it gives you a snapshot of all the pipeline that's been run and it shows you everything. So if you ever wanted to go back to it, you can do so by ML flow. So I think this is another really powerful yeah. feature of MLflow pipelines. Yeah, so all the artifacts are normally kind of all the del the, the data that we used to train in, the parameters and everything that's in there. Right? Exactly. So it even tells you, okay, for, for this run, what model have I chosen to run yeah. with? So I think that's, again, really, really powerful. Uh, and what you'd see here is, uh, uh, let's have a look. Um, once, once you run it, you can even have a look Transform, I'm on transform. Yeah. So if I go on to train, there we go. Look, it's come back. So you nice. quickly see, yeah, you immediately see ML flow run and it's been logged to the experiment. Okay. Yeah, I think it's really cool. And what I think is even cooler, right, is you get your your card here showing what your root mean squared error on your training data is, on your validation data is, and it gives you a summary of your model performances very quickly. Yeah, and that was using MLflow's auto logger, right? So you didn't even have to go and litter your code with just tons and tons and tons of loggers. It's just automatically going to go, oh, this is useful stuff, and go and capture it. Exactly. Um, it also, I like the leaderboard. So I've had a, a play with the leaderboard stuff as well. So if you're running more than one model, then it gives you, all right, out of the three models that you've run, this is the best, this is not quite so the best, and gives you all the metrics as well. I think that's your, your Kaggle obsession coming into, uh, into play. <laughs> And exactly. have a leaderboard. If it's a competition, then we're good. <laughs> exactly. Cool. Um, so I think it's got uh, so many features for for people just to experiment and play with, and yeah. just to, and and, it, and the, a lot of good features really from from your MLflow pipeline. What it also gives you the ability is for data science is the training examples with large prediction error, right? So for the model that I've chosen to train this data set with, how has it? So that these are the predicted and look at the errors, these are large errors. And it gives you the ability to dig a bit deeper to understand, okay, why am I getting such large errors? What's the cause of it? Do I need to go back and re-engineer my features? Do I need to choose a different model perhaps? Mm -hmm. And it just gives you that upfront kind of like, yeah, okay, I, I've got um, a site now, what I need to do. Very okay. cool. Yeah, so let's have a little play with, uh, with Transform. What I would really like to do, sorry, with Train, is to change the model here, right? So I've used a random forest regression estimator. What if I use a decision tree uh, estimator instead? So how's that going to look like? Let's have a look. Um, so all I have to do, change my model. Yeah, just switch function it uses. Cool. Yeah, I don't now need to go back and rerun my entire code. All I have to do is run your tree section of it. And that will automatically go and look at the Pi file, bring, yeah. br bring it all in, and do it for me automatically. Very nice. Really cool. Yeah, so that's doing it's thirty percent now. So when it gets to the end, it will then show you, okay, you've got two models that you've run now, and it'll compare model one versus model two and how it's all done. Uh, let's have a look. It's still it's still doing it. So that's going to take a little bit more time. Has it done it? Yes, it has. So I'm seeing really large errors in my validation sets. I'm not sure whether this is going to be a better model. Really, um, this is the seventh model that was run. It's not the best model, not so it's best. telling me, yeah. So there we go. That's an example of how you can play with it very quickly. If you can, yeah. and if you're working in separate in in a large team as well, you've got a, a team that's just working on using different models. You can work in a very efficient manner as well. And they could easily be what feature branched versions of the the same pipeline that they're working on, and you can scale out like that. Yeah, exactly. Right. 
Um, and then once you're happy with it, you, you can evaluate your model as well. That's all done for me as well. So I just hit run and that kind of code will run for me and tell me exactly based on the metrics that I've set in my YAML file, it will tell me how well my model is doing, whether yeah. it's met all those things. And you'll see in a bit here, there we are. it's coming up, model validation result. Look, it's not it's not met the value, the threshold that I've set initially. Yeah. So it's saying not good enough, go back, choose a different model, retrain your model. Yes. So your, your job isn't finished. Keep experimenting. <laughs> exactly. So this is not good enough. So I need to go back and choose my previous model that was a lot better than the the um the latest model that we chose. Yeah. And that, that makes a lot of sense. I mean, especially how we run data science projects, right? When we build out the canvas and we, you know, for a particular problem we're trying to predict, you can come up with what your various different validation rules are. And you're almost doing test-driven development as a data scientist in that you can set a load of criteria. And you go, you yep. keep experimenting until you make those criteria. And getting those defined up front before you start experimenting means you have that goal baked into your entire process. Which is, yes. I like it. And what I really like about it, so there's many things I like about it. I like the feature importance, uh, the chat plots that is also integrated with your ML4 pipelines. That shows this as a data scientist, you can say, okay, out of my data set, these are the features that are really important. Yep. So it's all it's all adheres to common good best practices. What sense? Yeah, and that's that's about it where we are in terms of ML4 pipelines. Uh, if you so say for example we ran our, our our first model and it was really good, you can go ahead and register the model as well. And at that point, the handoff to your machine learning engineers yep. is a lot easier, right? Everything is structured. It's a matter of the, uh, handing that across and they can carry on with it seamlessly. All right, very cool. All right, so to, to summarize what we have there for ML pipelines that we've seen. So the YAML file is all about environmental config, is that right? Jeez, yep, 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 so the YAML file, where's the YAML file? The YAML file is here, sorry, 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 I didn't go through that, but that is a template for your YAML yep. file, right? So it's a regression template. Um, you've got your data, so you, you your location, where you're ingesting your data from, where to get the data, where to put it, the environment to work on, so you can have it in different environments and do it out. The same as we use YAML for all the devops things of doing very similar things, right? Exactly, yep. Um, you've got, you know, you, you set your target column here. You've got your split ratios that you can set and play around with it. So if you're not happy with the 75, 12.5%, uh, 12 12 split, you can play around with that as well. This is where, as well, you'd set your validation criteria for your different metrics. So if you remember, our uh, second model that we chose failed the validation metrics. These are the threshold that I need to make sure that the model meets. So this is where you come and set it. Very cool. So we've got that combined, uh, doing all of our environments. We have a master notebook, which is calling the top level flow of here's all the steps in the right order that we want to go. And then yep. that's just calling child Python notebooks, but it's wrapping it in a load of automatic telemetry, automatic reporting, automatic like, sort of UI types of things to understand what happened there and giving you that framework process that it follows through each time. Is that fair? Yeah. That's fair. Yeah, absolutely. Very cool. All right. Well, at least I now actually understand what ML flow pipelines are. That makes a lot more sense actually seeing that worked example through. And yeah, it'll be interesting when they start to bring more templates on, they expand how many different varieties there are and they kind of just use that as a landing base and build out more and more breadth into it, right? And I think that's the plan, right? This is an experimental, I think ML flow pipelines now is experimental, but I think they, they will only, I can see a lot of benefit with this and I can only see them expanding it from a regression classification recommendation. And I'm really looking forward to seeing more and more templates come out awesome. and using it as well. Oh yeah, yeah, exactly. Yeah, well, that's the final question. Would you use this in anger with the client? Absolutely, absolutely, yeah. 100%. Oh. Yeah, I mean, the team at Advancing Analytics have already played around a lot with this and they've everybody has really enjoyed using it and seen a lot of benefits. Yeah, and for an experimental experimental feature, that is great feedback, right? <laughs> exactly. Yeah. And it's only going to be improving, right? So if you can do this now, being in an experimental version, I'm sure it's going to be developing a lot more advanced than what we see here. Amazing. Cool. Well, thank you for spending some time with us. And again, I'll drag you back to talk about the next interesting thing that we find in the data science world. But thank you, Gary. Okay, so yes, we've seen MR flow pipelines. We've seen that structure and the process. You've made my 
deep, dirty engineering heart happy by seeing an actual fairly, fairly formal process applied to the data science flow of work, ML flow, kind of makes sense. And actually it kind of mirrors a lot of what we do in the data engineering space, separating out when we're doing the cleansing of data and the landing it as a clean data set from when we do a transformed then kind of business logic applied version of it. That's what we do in a lake. So it's tactics of taking a lot of processes and just building out the lessons that we've learned from engineering into one coherent, consistent process that everybody can follow. And ah, yes, just makes sense. All right, so I'm sure there's gonna to be tons more we're gonna see for coming from Betty Bricks around MLflow pipelines and different flavors, different models, different, again, hopefully kind of more and more advanced functionality and kind of seeing those various different bits of feedback get even richer and more detailed. But that is it for now. We'll drop the link down to where you can go and again, recreate that same demo, go and join that kind of uh, Databricks repo, pull it down and just have a bit of a play on your own. And you can go and have a look at the various different docs and just read how to get started. Until then, that is it. As always, don't forget to like and subscribe and I'll catch you next time. Cheers.